You're looking for Virginia? Who are you? I don't feel safe. You're staring at me like some peeping Tom. There's no reason that the two of us can't see each other all the time. You know, a lot of the time. She's my friend. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick, episode six of Masters of Sex, Blackbird, Robert Abley, Bibbs, Alonzo. Uh, wow, stuff happened on this episode. Yeah, like, like a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. Cray -cray. A, lot, a lot of lies, a lot of uncomfortable truths, and uh, R.I.P. Dr. DePaul. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. spoilers. That was, that was, that was um, just, If you're watching this, you've already seen the episode. I'm just kidding. Yes. No, that, the, that was brutal. The, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. sadness of that whole thing was just really, that was intense. Yeah, but no. you know, I think handled with real dignity and and intelligence, and and I, I'm on her team for this sort of thing. Like, if you if you basically are going to tell me that like th there's no chance of recovery, it's just going to be this long, slow slog mm -hmm. through horror to ultimate death. I'm like, you know, yeah, bring on the morphine. Oh, and, the right. way, and the way Michael Apted shot her on the uh, on the table as she's making having that conversation with the with the uh, with the doctor, uh -huh. that was like old. That was like 30s, 40s. Great actress in a death scene, like yeah. that, that whole shooting. Bit. That was just that, fantastic. That whole subplot, really, I just think was the absolute highlight of this season. It's been great. It's been really, really fantastic. Uh, uh, people have been acting it out of the park, and just the again, you're right. The sensitivity, just the way that they treated. Here's this woman who was introduced as being defined by strength, mm -hmm. and just being reduced in her last day to being treated like an infant being cared for. Uh, and then wanting to go out on that note was so tender and was so beautiful and to you me. Get the impression I just it's, great. You get the impression it's what she got from Virginia, going out mm -hmm. on your own terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, what I thought was really interesting about this episode was so much of the what other people want you to do versus what you want for yourself. That seemed to be kind of the recurring thing throughout. You know, mm -hmm. Virginia wants her to fight. Virginia wants her to like, you know, have hope and do all this stuff. And 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 Lillian was not having it. You know, and and uh, you know, the Masters wants the journalist to write the story promoting the study, but she doesn't. He doesn't want her to write the story. Don't say that, the truth. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. Don't, 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 about don't, me. don't talk about how uh, my how, last well, crazy how much, few how months. How much of an a hole you know? I've been this entire season. Well, the truth is okay when it comes to science. Just outside of science. Yeah. yeah. Then it's then it's iffy. You know. I have an image. Well, I mean, that's protect. really the, the ongoing theme of this show, which is science is all well and good, but once you extract the science, life is nothing more than a cheesy soap opera. Yeah. yeah. You, know? you know? Then you got Libby, you know, is trying to force... Oh, God. This, uh, oh, my God. Uh, I want to punch this subplot yeah. in the face. I, well, it's, I mean, it's, been, oh. it's fascinating, and it's... it's kind of fascinating. I think Actually, it's, I'm it's, sorry. It's, they just reduced this. They have an entire speech in this particular episode about how insanely backward and ridiculous things like the Mandingo fan fantasy are and what are we leading towards these the erotic charge between her and that brother her thing was like oh no all i really wanted was like oh no i'm too too close to this black guy it's uncomfortable if this leads to an affair between her and that guy i am calling so much foul well, on I, just I, really I know, just it's going not erotic yet it's just it's, it's just a natural fascination with something that you aren't ever around you don't, okay but here's the thing there's a push it's in the show masters of sex i think they well, want us to, to think that there's something I, I there think, i think that, that might be an element to it but i think there's a lot more going on in general with Libby and her thoughts about she probably thinks of herself as being a racially enlightened you mm -hmm. know intelligent woman and at the same time has this equal parts fear of and desire for what she sees as this kind of you know black masculinity yeah. uh, and I, I think that that's an interesting avenue I want to see where they it's, take this it's kind of interesting but at the same time it just feels so Douglas Cirque to me in this very wrong with that. Sure. And, well, hang on <laughs> hang on hang on hang on I'm not that I didn't quite mean that as a compliment because I don't think it's being done as well because her her extremely I'm sorry I consider her entire subplot either grotesque or trite at turns throughout this entire season. This entire first half of the season feels like the show has been, even when it's been great, sporadically great, from moment to moment, scene to scene, performance to performance, just treading water, waiting. Everyone in the show is so directionless right now. Every character doesn't know what they want to do, where they want to be, and I get that that's natural and human. It is terrible drama, and it is rapidly but, losing. But, I, but, I, no, I well, think, but think, he's already been through two hospitals. Exactly, and, two I mean, hospitals. Things, but Get things, to the point of the I, show. Things, no, no, no. things I, have happened. No, the point of the show was was given to you last season. He was at, he, at one entire hospital. They were driven last season, and they were at a place where they could like set up the... the I mean, this is the point where 
like in his life, he was at a point between having a, a base home and mm -hmm. being able to publish. They haven't gotten to the yeah. point. The publishing and is I'm when saying that's not the again. dramatic part okay, of his story. But, but, but here's the thing, thing man, they've been putting all this stuff together. You have his affair with uh, mm -hmm. Virginia that he thinks of as Getting being pretty purely tedious, scientific, yeah. but... You know, they, they kissed this episode, I, they which, kissed is in, which is in, no, which is but, enormous no, for they, them. They, but they kissed that, in a way you hadn't seen them kiss. That, they kissed okay. as a result of an emotional connection. I mean, that was uh, why they kissed. They I mean, crossed the line he, from from him being able to rationalize yeah. this thing in his mind as being this sort of scientific exactly. encounter. To him affair. comforting her. Me, and he discovers uh, that, that she hasn't just been sitting by the phone pining for him. Yeah. She's been having a relationship, having a life of her own. Right. And how exactly. dare he have a the problem with that? The days of our lives element of this show is fantastic and keeps going strong. I, the plot of it. Like no. the actual direction of why the show was, I, what the show was I, pitched I that, on as the framing that is, device that is, for that, that is, is dying is, on that the That is really reductive because think about it this way. Think of like the passionate sex that you see him have with Ginny mm -hmm. and the perfunctory awkward sex that he has with Libby. Yep. You know, Libby in a lot of ways is like the pretzel king. She is married to somebody and she's invested in the marriage and the other person is sexually elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. It, uh, if you're going to have a show that lasts many seasons, you have to have moments where things aren't clear cut for anybody and what happens then well things aren't that that i mean last season was almost like a hospital show you had patients mm -hmm. and you had the, they brought their own stories to the to the hospital and yeah. and you, you were setting things up and it was a good season and it got better but uh, to me this is the season that establishes this as a fascinating show emotionally and thematically, and I have I have no problems See, with the things that are happening. In this. I can appreciate. Listen, and again, there's so much excellent work on the show. I I don't want to make it seem like I'm denying the show its ability to reach its audience because there's so much good work being done. But what I see on this show, and what I see repeatedly on this show, is the context of history and the context of what Bill Masters and, and Libby are doing, or, or not Jenny. Libby, Jenny. Uh, what they are doing used as a framing device for uh, e emotional, very typical soap operatic content. There's nothing terribly wrong with that. It's just a function that the screenwriting is serving. The problem is, is that one of them has, is the one that sort of interested me more, and that's at a disservice right now because we're at this point where no one knows what they're doing. No one knows where they're going. Everyone has a decision to make. And we're lingering on that for so long that one half of the show's premise is not doing very well right now, while the other half is thriving. And I don't consider that well, great I, writing. I, I find that frustrating I, I, over I, time as we're watching on a weekly basis. If I was watching it all together, in a chunk, it might not be as frustrating, I, but at a weekly basis, I disagree with me. you that because the study isn't actively a part of the story right now, that the show is somehow floundering. I think that it's still touching those bases about the context of this world, the, the sort of misinformation mm -hmm. and backwards nature of this world in, in regards to sex and relationships, mm -hmm. and mining that for personal drama about these people. And so I think mm -hmm. even without the study happening, these people are all sort of victims of their historical context in one way or another. And again, I think that they're really finding interesting thematic ways to kind of work through that. Like I said, this episode is so much about people, about, about lying to other people mm -hmm. and about wanting people to be what you want them to be when mm -hmm. they aren't. You know, again, the, the whole thing with with Masters discovering Ginny's, you know, boyfriend going on. Yeah. He has a thing in his mind of what their relationship is mm -hmm. and is clearly, like, wigging out to discover that that's not how it's going to go. Yeah. And I, I don't think there's anything necessarily soap operatic about it. This is a show about relationships and about sex and yes. about love. That's what it's, a soap it's, opera it's, is. It's, it's, well, so, yeah, so but I mean, a soap opera is also about, you know, people no, walking no, and talking uh, no. and standing. You uh, can't, you uh, could uh, reduce uh, anything to look, a soap opera. A soap opera, opera is, to. we need something interesting here, throw it in. I mean, and that can be fun sometimes. This is not a soap opera. This is uh, where writers go, what happens when this happens in these people's lives? And then they explore it. I mean, like, I think this show is laser... a good soap opera This show right is now. laser focused on these people's emotional lives. I mean, laser focused in a way that I don't think maybe any other show is right now. And I think it's giving you that every single week. I mean, I think that's last, the best part I mean, of the show. Last I don't, year... Don't, don't think I use soap opera as a derogatory term. It well, no, but like I, you but, are. I, but it no. is because I don't think this show is a soap opera. <laughs> okay. I mean, a soap opera is a show that where you, I mean, where I would, there are curveballs because you have to, you have to keep things happening. It, it, so yeah. that's when so evil twins appear or like people okay, turn on a dime. You're describing bad soap opera. But, you're using the absolute oh, nadir okay, of a genre but, but, to describe but, the genre. But but people here are operating within 
the characters that have been established for yeah, them, yeah. but they're taking them in more interesting directions, in deeper directions, in more complicated directions. The way directions. that they play, for example, I'm just going to use one example from this episode. The way that they played Bill Masters going over to Janie's house, I've lost my job, my wife, etc. You're dating someone else? And the way that that sort of affects him as this huge emotional moment, where, whereas Ginny is letting someone die next to her, all right, that is a soap operatic okay, but, but, moment. Okay, okay, that is what that all right, is. Then let's take a look, look at that specifically. First of all, th that, is, that moment with Masters is coming on the heels of this months-long right. clandestine mm -hmm. affair sure. that he's been trying to pretend wasn't a love affair yeah, when clearly dramatic. it was. Yes. So of course so him discovering... the moment when he finds out that he really isn't pretending... I mean, that he's he not the center of her life the way that yeah, she's the center of his. Is, so of course that's a big this moment. Is what, yeah, this is what it is. And that's a valid way... that's That's a good thing. I don't consider that a bad thing. Okay, but you're having it both ways. You're trying to accuse a show of, of, of operating in like the, empty no, I'm accusing the show, I'm not accusing the show of that. I am saying that to my mind, the show operates as a soap opera and it operates as the, the framing device for the soap opera, which is the whole historical context, the study, that sort of as a baseline so-called A-plot, whereas the soap opera stuff is more important. And the A-plot is not thriving right now and I find that distracting. I will That's give you I'm this. Saying. There were moments last, last year and I think early on when you thought maybe the show could go in a soap opera direction, like okay. early on. But I think it quickly disabused you of that notion as it, as it got along, and I think it's now almost devoid of soap opera things. Okay. You know, and then the moment with Ginny and, and Lillian, that's a moment that was built to over the course yes. of several scenes. It's mm -hmm. earned. It's, it, it, it's completely it's earned. earned. It is that, that, oh, that part's great. That phone call and then her putting the phone no, down. No, that part like, was amazing. I just hope they don't trace that call. Well, yeah, I was thinking yeah. that too. But I... I, I I, I, it sounds to me like you're accusing the show of doing something, and then now you're saying that those are okay. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying that to my mind, the show is structured in a certain way that balances two story elements, and at one point, one of them is getting in so, so much more focused than the other that I've lost interest in that other part, and that part of the show seems less interesting mm. to me. I feel like to me, this is ultimately the show about uh, Masters and Johnson, <laughs> about yes. the people. Yeah. The study <laughs> figures into that, but even if the study goes to the background for a while, there's enough going on in their lives and the lives of the people around them yeah. that. Is maintaining my interest in this series. Fair and enough. That's what's happening. Fair enough. So, I respect you. Fair enough. I respect you, and I respect you as well, sir. <laughs> so, lots of thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back. Genre next week. studies. <laughs>